Ladies and Germans, how are you all doing? This is Khan Ulrich. And I'm Ryan Roo. Hello, hello, hello. And we're bringing you guys some tournament play from SD44. It is in the PDX tournament. We still have to wait a little bit longer to get those games. This comes to us from the Asian community out there. A recent tournament run by Prodas Zakar. So a big thank you for to him for running it and for sending the replays into us. And today, actually, on Mount Ormo, a map we don't get to see very often, we have a great showdown. Who do we have, Ryan? Well, on the left-hand side in blue, we have KU25-2-1 as the ever-so-loved first Polish Armored Division. And on the right-hand side in red, we have Gal O'Neill as the Troph SS Panzer Division. Now, we've been seeing a lot of these guys, well, especially the Poles, a lot recently. Mm -hmm. Why are we seeing the 12th SS so much? Uh, why right, we haven't seen it that much? That's exactly, yeah, exactly right. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know, really. Trophy Sess is really one of the top-tier decks. It's a, it's a very solid Panther deck. It relies on Panthers and Tigers, where it's a really, you know, the solid tanks that you want to be working with. It's got good infantry selection, good artillery selection. And the main thing is that it can exploit a push, which a lot of decks, especially infantry decks, have a hard time doing. And as well... You know, Firefly, Boyta Cromwell, both really fantastic units to use in A-Phase. Definitely sounds about right. Now, actually, as the players are kind of getting to their final preparations here, and actually we're off right now, so maybe that'll wait for a little bit later in this opening breakout. Looks like Gal going to be a little bit more aggressive, but Mount Ormel, taking yeah. us through the map right now, is, is it going to be like this spine of the world kind of separates the two different flanks, or are we going to see a lot of movement laterally across this, do you think? Uh, I think flanks are really going to be where most of the play should really happen, just because both sides are tank divisions, and mm -hmm. there's more tank division area. I'm really interested to see how the, in the middle goes, because we're, I think we're actually seeing some Dragoonies, some, some actual non strochki infantry here for <laughs> KU2521, but they don't really have anything CQC to be where you can get Sapperies. And same thing with Gao, it's not B, so I can get Pioneers. So I think it's going to come down more to fire support in mm -hmm. this uh, middle forest fight. Really anything to, uh, you know, for really the breakthrough to happen. That is true. We are going to see some Dragoni, you are correct there, uh, as well as some Streltsy. But the thing is, I don't know, I kind of ha can't help but wonder if those early stewards can be leveraged into having some really, really tough times for the 12th SS. Yeah, um, I'm not seeing a Firefly for Trophy SS, it's really just a single pack 50 millimeter for the middle. I know Stuart early on can be an absolute pain in the ass. you're absolutely right, because the only other tank you really got is a Panzer II, and the Panzer II isn't exactly the best for dealing with of our armor. That is true. Okay, we have actually have another pack thirty to the pack thirty. Excuse me, to the north. They got me doing it now, but I do like that the poles seem to have a nice little battle group on two of these separate areas here. Not too much in the south, but center and north seems to have definitely have that. Yeah, I'm interested in seeing he's using the Hold Fire Command up north to get his infantry into the positions, into the actual buildings for, well, defense. But yeah, it's pretty much got this, the, you know, it's middle defense, and then this top defense of uh, concentrated units. Both sides being very negligent on this uh, southern flank, only a single 250, and a single surgery squad just holding at the point. But very defensive play from both sides, I mean... We're almost 2 minutes, 30 seconds in, and no one has fired a shot. It's like 11-11-11. Sounds about right. At the same time, maybe there's just you know, that, that last little bit before the calm, before the storm. Yep. We are going to see Universal Carrier bringing on in an actual 6-pounder to the south, so that half track really should not be where he is. Mm -hmm. Yo, I think he's behind the building. Oh yeah, never mind. Know. He's no, gotta... Not really. No, basically, he's got a shot blocker for about 200 meters, I would say, from where that six-pounder is going to be going. Oh, yeah, good point, good point. But no, okay, uh, Germans bringing some in... Yeah, wow, cannot talk today. Bring some of their own anti-tank into the north, but yet we still see both guys are just kind of slowly gathering force. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm quite surprised not seeing KU going more aggressive, because he is the Polish division, the aggressive A-phase. He has the tanks, you know, he can outnumber Gal O'Neill right now. You don't really want to be giving Gal an easy passive time, because that means he can just save up for Tiger or Panther and B-Phase. Mm -hmm. And Tigers and Panthers can be a bit tricky to deal with. That is true, that is true. And you're definitely right to also mention the fact that the economy benefit that he has right now 
mm -hmm. really cannot be overstated how how effective that could have been. Yeah, and he, I mean, he can just throw out Strotskis in the middle. In CQC, they're going to be pretty efficient against the Panzer Grenadiers, just run and run. And considering Strotskis are like half the price, essentially, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you might as well just be spamming through middle with all your Polish infantry. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. But now, it's like a very, it's like a very timid dance between both sides. I mean, you see up north, the Strotskis now pulling back a little bit. As but yeah, but you know what? Coming. I I kind of like that early kind of tactical play. Both guys are gently probing a little bit. Like Ku doesn't see yeah. anything. He knows there's a half track down south, and that's it. Gal Gal is only a little bit better. He knows there's a six pounder to this south. He knows there's a couple tanks to the north. But neither player really knows where each other is on this. Oh, it's gonna be shot. Oh yes, and there we go. Yeah, there we go. Finally, it's a roar. There's some war fighting. I'm happy. <laughs> I think war fighting is an appropriate verb. War fighting? Yeah, that sounds about right. War fighting. They fight wars. That's true. That's true. That if, if, run. if there is war fighting, then at that point, I dub you War Daddy. How about that? <laughs> Except I will not be War Mommy. No, oh. I'll be happy to be War Uncle, but not War, not war Mommy. <laughs> All right, 222 starting to engage some infantry to the north. Strelzi trying to put pressure on this Pack 38. And honestly, they take that out. That still is a bigger loss for the Germans mm -hmm. than dropping that half track and maybe even that infantry from yeah. the Poles. They just kind of got this like slow push from there. The 250 moving up, giving some fire support, rear it auto cannon. And maybe, you know, a gal can make some progress up north, capture these very important farmsteads, which are very useful defensive locations. Yeah, but at the same time, you can see right now that six pounder starting to put rounds in down towards that 220, no, excuse me, 250. Wow. Mm -hmm. 222 is to the north of that. Um, I think I was more afraid of the fact that he gets closer to that infantry in the houses. He's got to know that there's more AT than just one AT gun. Yeah. I mean, you also just want to be a bit careful. I mean, as of course, our little dragonies down there don't want to be rushing in the 250s. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he's pretty much leading with vehicles where he really should have maybe his recon or some infantry lead in the front. I mean, especially in this town fighter at Strelchke, it's just a single panzer grenadier. I mean, it is run slightly up north trying to you know screen in front to capture the area definitely be a bit better and just trying to rush in with a uh, 250 run which is actually going to kind of work no, is it oh uh, i don't know about age. that there's two there's a tank yeah never mind there we go grenades so, actually kill it no well it's a tank oh. and the steward oh well, and the uh excuse oh, me yeah. wow six pounder hurricane coming in as well and some of the infantry i wouldn't be surprised if now gets turned around on the germans that they get forced to surrender mm-hmm but the Germans still do have a slight territory advantage, and that's playing well into the 12th SS. This is going exactly yeah. what you said before. You cannot let the 12th SS get any kind of early territory. Yep, yeah. and really, uh, both decks really... Like, their benefit is once they get the tank blob. Trophy SS, pound for tiger tank blob, get uh, Polis... Cromwell, Sermons, Achilles, etc. Mm -hmm. And if one side could get that, you know, big rolling death ball of heavy armor coming down the road, it's really going to benefit you later on. I think that's really how the game is going to come down. But oh, I've actually seen some more half tracks. So it's definitely going to be a damn good choice for this map. That is definitely true. And you'll see the 250 coming up for the Germans and actually a Sexton coming in for the Poles. So there's oh, your. There we go beloved artillery vehicle yep. there he got the sex on an a phase he knows what he's doing <laughs> this you, is you get the sex on an a phase we've seen his time and time again gone that is certainly true i guess my concern is ooh, there goes the pack 38 to the south uh so germany's taking some significant losses maybe not massive amounts but significant ones at least mm -hmm. but if these pegrins can shift back this streltsy and the you know attendant dragoni back onto that um armor blob back there will that be enough for the germans to get through uh, maybe. I don't think the Panzer Grenadier is going to be able to break through as they just don't have enough firepower in CQC. But if they were to, I mean, it really is these vehicles, like the Stuart, you just pop with a Panzer Faust and you call a day. Yeah, I think he's is sneaking in that one Panzer Grenadier, so maybe he will be able to get sight on that Stuart and uh, send a bit of heat love at Ray. Well, that's what's going to make a question and a comment about as well, is that we are going to see that Stuart can't see anybody. It's maybe, yeah. it's sight range as well, like under 100 meters practically? Yeah, right? he pretty much has it like ambushed on that road to maybe pop out if a vehicle or like a half track rush tries to come down, but um, yeah. This needs no. more infantry in the middle. I mean, you might as well just throw in some more Strouchkeys. They're really cheap. 
Now, I do like we're going to see the Sexton start firing up to the north. Um, Might have been better just maybe to bring it behind the Stewart up to the north. Just at least, if nothing else, give it the veterancy. Uh, yeah, the veteran sea would help out cry a bit, but I think he's just trying to stay out of range of potential mortal half tracks. I mean, he does have double the range compared to him, so I, I think he's just pretty much just being a bit safe and sorry. I do want to give two quick things. One is the struts here down, and second is that Stewart is down as well. I looked away, I looked back, and yeah, that, that Fausted by the Panzer Grenadiers. Oh, damn, that's a, that's a down good kill knocking out that Stewart. And this is, this is going really well for Gallo and Eel. I mean, he's not taking any big territory chunks, but it's just a nice, slow, plus one point advantage. Nothing too crazy. That's all they need to do. Sounds right. Exactly. I mean, he's up He's up almost 500 tickets already. I mean, we're yeah. coming into phase B, which at that point, like you said already, should be going, what, do you think over to Gallo Neil, given the current position? Wow. Mortar half-track to the north is stressing out, what, five units, six units all at once. Yeah, but all just uh, very bunched up here. Yeah, Gallo really has a... The, uh, the momentum, really. He's he's pushing a little bit in mid. On. He's definitely going to work out better once he can get some pioneers on the field and B phase. You know, he's stunning up all of this up north. And if he can, like, fully stun it up and force it to retreat, maybe he could get a, a uh, not, not surrender, but take some ground. I doubt that's going to happen because looking at it, he doesn't really have any line of sight of what actually is in the air. But uh, just by the benefit of her from being so close, he's getting some good stuns. I do like the fact that he's got this anti-air cover like mm -hmm. crazy. He's got three different half tracks, uh, just yeah. ha all kind of hanging on out. Yeah, they're, they're, they're only the twenty millimeters, mm -hmm. which is a little bit of a shame. I'm actually surprised he didn't get the uh, rubber wind. That's 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 a Troph SS classic, right? Yeah. That is true, but ask yourself again though, how how expensive is it? Well. It's 80 points, but you also got to realize this is free 20 millimeters for 175, 165 points. While you can get one rubber wind, which is four 20 millimeters for 80 points. Yeah. You know, at the same time, you can spread out these uh, single 20 millimeters a bit more around the map. And that's so, exactly what I was going to make the comment about too. Yeah. But still, you know, I, it was just four oh, 20 no. mils. You know, we're strapped together. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of DACA. That yeah, would make the Orcs in 40k pretty proud. That's true. That is yeah. absolutely true. And uh, well done on you there for uh, calling that out. Um, I know I know 40k is not really your thing too much. Yeah, oh, it's pretty cool. I'm 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 a battle tech nerd. If we're gonna go, yeah. But, oh, we can go know, there too. I can, I can I can I can respect 40k for all it is, and that's been pretty pretty out, yeah. Okay, how about this then? You know what? That that the uh, verbal fin is kind of like a Yager mech. Yeah, it's kind kind of is like a Yagamek. Well, because Yagamek was definitely anti-air yeah. as well, so. Yeah, yeah. With the two AC-10s and a couple of AC-5s on there, we are going to see P4 mm -hmm. coming out from Gallo Neil to the south, but neither player really going with a significant investment into Phase B. No, this is. I mean, we've got like yeah, like a Panzer four, some AA from KU, which is quite entertaining, as we haven't seen any planes from Gallo Neil. Yeah, so true. maybe he's gonna be using it for fire support is what I'm I'm thinking maybe now with the placement of it not the yeah. southern one anyway wow that's a really poor placement if he's using it for fire support I do like seeing your beloved uh, Cromwell sixes though yeah are definitely trying to assert themselves from that range yeah at one point two kilometers yeah it's just so bloody good it's really one of the reasons why poses are such a strong a phase deck because. The Trophy SS gets one of those Cromwell 6s, and that's already a pretty big game changer. Being able to get four of them in A phase, it's just, especially considering you're not flying against a bunch of tanks in A phase against mm -hmm. the Germans, is, well, I mean, Trophy SS can get a firefly. There's your Rebel Fint. Yeah, it's my Rebel Wind. I can now die a happy man. But uh, <laughs> because you're mainly dealing with light armor, like half tracks and infantry in A phase against Germans, mm -hmm. you know, all you need is a. 95 millimeter screw you gun at 1.2 kilometers to deal with most threats. True. True. But wait, at the same time, if you're oh my gosh, more airstrikes coming on in. The poles just doing that. Yeah. Way too well. Yeah, you know, way too well. It's just so cost efficient for airstrikes, especially in one v ones, as they're cheap to get, mm -hmm. and you're not having to worry too much about like. You know, at 101st play, who manages to save up for 6P51 Mustangs. 
Now we are going to see a actual. Ooh, can we quit the fur ball? Voskhirayski, whatever. Well, I can't even pretend to know his name. The two star ME109. So it's a battle of the aces, and neither one of them is really going to come out happy. No. I mean, yeah, that AA is going to protect the other. I think maybe the Mustang can get the kill on the Messerschmitt that has been tagged up quite a bit. The Royal nah. Oh, yeah, nah. there we go. Nah, if he goes in there, he's going to get picked off. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was a smart move. No, we do have a ton of close quarters action happening in the center part of the map, which is kind of weird, too, frankly, considering the kind of messy units that are there. Yeah, no, no real CQC infantry. I mean, he's, he's throwing pan grenadiers into a forest fight, which is not not Panzer Grenadier territory, and I hope the infantry being brought up right now are Pioneers. I, I hope to God for Gal O'Neill that they are Pioneers. Well, they are the half tracks. Yeah, hmm. Yeah, I... I oh no, we'll just have to see when they unload. Strangely enough, if this Panzer IV rotates to the center part of the map, he would do pretty darn well against that. Give him one squad of infantry to assist against any possible AT that we know is there, at least. Yep. He would take the... He would rupture the entire center. Yeah, he would be able to do that. It's just too bad he doesn't have any recon or real ever supporting units to help him out if he was to try and attack down south. But once again, um, neither player really able to see too much on this map. And you have to kind of hand it to Mount Ormal. This thing is a beast and a half in terms of yeah. trying to see anything. Yeah, it's a real uphill battle. Oh my god, you were waiting for a while for that one, weren't you? <laughs> I was waiting for that one. That was a yeah, me it, joke. It's a tough map because, once again, like the whole line of sight between hills can get a little bit funky. Mm -hmm. And um, especially on this sort of setup here, as it is a very CQC, there's a lot of line of sight blockers all over. So, like, airplane strikes such as this, mm -hmm. gonna work fantastic. True, true. And actually, I'm surprised that he sent in that air power when he did. I would have thought it would have been more saved for when he brings this Wolverine up. Yeah, yeah. Before, like, you know, rushing the Panzer Four, but I think a Messerschmitt's gonna go down, yeah. Uh, no, no, I think, I think we're gonna get a stun up. Oh. One, okay, oh my god, one burst <laughs> of fire. One burst of fire, that's all you needed. <laughs> well, that's just uh, that's sad. Yeah. yeah. But very lucky, yeah, for the Poe to Hurricane. He has another kill, or oh, a kill. So, looking at this right now, the Axis are up about 650 points, mm -hmm. which is nothing, of course. Wolverine's going to get first shot over here the Panzer IV. He takes that out. That's a big loss. Yeah. Retreat, my friend. There we go. Yeah. But looking at the positions right now, I, I'm sure you'll disagree with me, or maybe you will agree with me. I don't know. Panzer Grants, by the way, not Pioneers in the center. Ah, oh, come on. Come um, on. Oh, he's, he's, he's going to make a new sustained rush there, so at least that's kind of good. Yeah. Um, but looking at the poles, I can't help but like the poles positioning a lot more. There's this defense in depth that's just going to oh, yeah. do so well. Especially up north, like, it's like the first line is Stroke Keys, mm -hmm. the second line is Fire Support, and then the third line has the Sexton. That's, re that's a really beautiful, just aesthetically, you know, good defensive line. Mm -hmm. And he's slowly starting to break through a bit with some Stroke Key play, but he's going to need some of his more second line units up front to help deal with the south and he is using the Cromwell very efficiently to knock out you know, 50 millimeter and counter battery to knock out the uh, mortar so maybe he can rupture his northern flank mr ku true true and yes actually he thinks i guess he thinks that his uh sexton at uh, 40 rounds of munitions is starting to be excuse me a little bit low bringing yeah. in some munitions points already i'm surprised by that yeah okay, um, You've made comments that the Sexton starts shooting on Monday, and damn, Nothing help me if it, it just... like Saturday. Exactly, of the yeah. following week. <laughs> it shoots eight times a week. Yes, eight, yes. Week. Yeah. Uh, he loves the Beatles. Yeah. It's been a hard day's night, Khan. Well, he is the walrus. Yeah. Well, he's the Polish, really, but... <laughs> um, okay, we are, are going to see some separatists coming on through for the poles, and that kind of makes me a little bit depressed, because I'm definitely with you. Pioneers would have been a great call. Yeah. For, for the poles or for the Germans? Oh, for the Germans, good God. Yeah. You know you know on which side my bread is buttered. I, I know, I know. It's just... yeah, it's just, I'm really surprised. I Because I swear you can get Pioneers and B-Face for Trophus S. I mean, I think, I think I'm fairly certain about that. But this... Panzer Grenadiers, CQC, not a good choice. And really, this goes for anyone. If you can take Pioneers in your deck, take him. Usually a good idea, yeah. Just, just take him. They're such a good unit. 
because they can still go toe to toe with most allied infantry at long range while still being able to get in close and do the nitty gritty with their grenade spam. I don't know how. Oh my gosh, was that was that the Wolverine? Oh, sweet mother of pearl. Yeah. I thought I was I saw tracks, wheels destroyed, and I was like, wait a second, was that the actual airplane that did that? I was just completely stunned. Oh, we got uh, we got Mr. Ripman on the field, Khan. Oh, uh, you want to take bets on how quickly he dies? Uh, I give it six minutes. Uh, I'm, I think I'll probably take the under on that one. Okay, sure. So if he doesn't die, um, yeah, so by minute thirty, let's 26. say twenty-six. I say oh. twenty-six minutes and uh, no, not not bloody hell. Uh, fourteen minutes time remaining. Fifteen minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll see. Because that Wolverine, that Wolverine's coming awfully far forward, yeah, and it is. and Vitman is, well, he's gonna go right into that line of fire at some point. Mm. Yeah, because that Wolverine. Oh, jeez. He could post up just to the left of where he's uh, looking right now, and that'd be more than enough. That's just got the uh, heavy airplay from the pose, which really is working quite well. His hurricanes in the gun runs are, are really quite nasty to deal with. And I like how he uses the hurricanes for the gun run and have the Mustang, you know, the back just pretty much protecting them, and then going after the Messerschmitt. Well, when you think about it, who's going to be a better dogfighter, the uh, Mustang or the Hurricanes? Yeah, the Mustang is definitely going to be better in, mm -hmm. just in terms of the chase because it goes like bloody 700 kilometers an hour. But a Hurricane, once it gets close range, if you get into a turn fight with a Hurricane or a lot of Hurricanes, it can be scary because the opponent can usually get a lot of Hurricanes. A uh, rocket attack in the middle, that's going to stun up all the infantry. And I don't know, I'm not liking how this is looking for Gallo Neal. No, it's uh. Crew knocked out in Tiger Vitman. Wow. That was fast. Come on, Wolverine just needs to move up, and but he's actually going to be a treason as a Wolverine. I don't think he saw the critical hit on that, so... Well, I think it kind of makes sense, though, too. Yeah. There's no reason for you to be too aggressive. Yeah. You have the entirety of phase C. We just hit phase C now, of yeah. course. And you're clearly controlling this, this space. Yeah. He is actually going to be... Oh, no, he's... Gal O'Neill is actually smoking Rickman. Trying to keep him alive, which is definitely a good play. It is a little weird to see smoke being fired towards the rear, but when, you know, yeah. Vitman's on the field. Yeah. <laughs> you know, strange things happen when he's online. But you also notice that he has said, screw the smoke, I'm going through it anyway. Yeah. And that's why he never lasts. <laughs> uh, bit of a Polish uh, thrust coming up through the middle part of the field, taking out the eyes of the German army. I, I don't know. I don't know. Can you see this working out for Gal O'Neill? Uh, Rofe, it's, a, it's kind of an ad advantageous position to hold because it really is the uh, artery between the middle and the northern flank. Mm -hmm. So maybe once he holds this area, he could try to put some more pressure up north. But I feel like he just really needs to like commit with a big stroke keepers and then just have his tanks. Because he has his Stuart back here, not really doing much, so just being moral support. And this mm -hmm. is a command tank mm -hmm. but it's also a tank and you might as well use it as a tank if you have it on the field because this Cromwell is pretty much just doing all the work but again if he doesn't need to use it then why bother yeah. right yeah um, I guess he doesn't really have line of sight in middle I mean he doesn't really have any recon it's just a bunch of stroke keeps essentially okay so Vitman hasn't masked himself yet again I think this Wolverine is trying to see okay how close can I get to get that couple of shots off yeah I'm actually surprised I haven't seen like an Achilles or like a Firefly being brought up to counter. I've seen another Wolverine, but both sides for you know their retrospective tank divisions are pretty pretty light on tanks. I'd have to say. Oh jeez. Oh here we go shooting the Cromwell, and SF they're gonna go down. I mean Rickman's gonna get run kill. He's gonna need to get another 14 really to a match up to his name. Oh never mind. He's not even gonna kill the Cromwell. Nope. He's gonna be able to get out. Nope, this is not the Villa Bocage. Nope. Uh, pain Train coming on in three Hurricanes this time. Ooh. So, guys, it is hurricane season. <laughs> Lock your doors and hit the grocery stores. Yep. And those Panzer Grands are just going to get completely shredded. As you as you might expect, here's the ME-109. And, and they're going to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe and that guy's dead. He's going to die. Yeah. yeah. And the jump, right, he does have the rubber end. And there we go. Look at, yeah, 420 mils. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's not in the best spot because it doesn't really have that great line of sight in terms of air. 
True, true. But considering his current position, those are probably the best he's going to be able to do. Exactly. German lines are beginning to fold up north. Um, the infantry is getting pushed back and going to get surrounded and taken on out. Alf Clare are going to be forced to surrender. The A T, excuse me, A A half uh, platforms are going to get taken on out. Six pounders yeah. going to kill something here. Seventeen pounder. Well, I was looking at the, the for the four or six pounder, oh, I so. guess. That's fine. Yeah, he gets just the other side of the standard trees. Game's over. And the Dragoni, well, the Dragoni got a Piat off and took out a 222, so oh, wow. they paid for themselves. And he almost managed to kill pounds of fallen middle, but uh, they did get stunned up. And this is really the push that KU needed. This is going to be a huge chunk of land up north. And it's too bad Ritman isn't up north, because this would have been the perfect place for him to try and stop. So really, I think it's going to be down to Gout making something happen down south. Because really, yeah, there's not much here. I mean, he does have to be cautious of if there is an anti-tank gun in this center forest. There isn't. But um, <laughs> he doesn't know it, of course. But he's moving in course leave Tiger Ritman, using smoke, going from building to town to tree line, whatever. And he, he needs to make something happen down south to counteract its northern assault. True, but if he wants to do that, he's also going to go up against another Firefly being brought on in now. Ooh. So that is going yeah. to two guns first run exactly exactly and, and big guns at that yeah. i do want to note tiger ripman has actually survived longer in six minutes so no 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 that was another mini a timer mini i thought was 14 14 minutes right okay yeah let's go to 14. <laughs> see if he's still alive by then but i will concede that you are a, a much better canadian than i am yeah but all right um I have been surprised by the relative lack of bloodlust that's happened from both players here. Yep. I think it's just, it's just the map. Both sides are very cautious of fighting over this hedgerow hell. And they just don't really want to commit too much. I mean, we've finally seen the commitment here from KU from Pushin. But just considering how many areas where AT guns can be hidden on this map, okay, here comes I, the... I'd be a little bit scared of moving up. Here comes the tank and spank. Hurricane coming on in. Rockets away. Even stressing, yeah, stress, Whitman is stressed yep. out. Here, okay. And, yep, here come the AT platforms. Rubble. And I think the Rur oh, is that one Rubble going to be enough? I mean, it is, I mean, stop it so we can actually shoot accurately, but, uh, I know, I think that Mustang may be able to get the intercept on the Messerschmitt. Nope, he makes it away. Ooh. Shockingly. Uh, well, and that Firefly is announcing its presence, and now, okay, now Vitman has gotten away. Yeah. So there you go. He is now, been a, he's day. lasted a lot longer. Yeah, and, and he's lasted longer than six, seven minutes, so yeah, there you go. That's, that's some good Ritman play. I mean, if he makes it last and tidy the match, I will be shocked and stunned. I do want to say something that's kind of funny to me. We see a 17-pounder practically on the front lines. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think it's because the Germans were that aggressive. I think the Poles were like, you know what? This is really the more of a point-and-shoot kind of operation yep. here. I mean, it's a good position to get the 17-pounder because that's such a good, like, area to lock down. But it's a little bit presumptuous considering he hasn't cleared out the entire tree line yet. True. True. Very, very true. But it's just it's sort of a really good push up north because it's really starting to encroach a bit down south. And if he wants to move from this northern to southern artery... Yeah, I could really shut down the whole southern flank. And considering there's no pioneers for the Germans, I, I'd be pretty easy to uh, knock out one to deal with light armor. I am surprised, extremely surprised at that, that we're seeing so many of these 20 mil half tracks. I didn't realize there yeah. were that many. Uh, I, I think his entire AA setup is really just 20 mil half tracks. Rich, I isn't really a good idea. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't like that very much. No, I mean. Don't use single 20 minutes. Oh, yes. Here comes another P4 ace. Kretschma has now hit oh, the here field. Oh, we go. Double Rami. Someone uh, know what pre-order DLC. Oh, no, no, no. Never mind. This is the free ace that just got released yeah. a couple weeks ago, wasn't it? It was, uh, if you can... It, pretty much if you want a, uh, bloody attack and defend. That's during, what it was, like, right. Christmas time, mm -hmm. you got him. So here we go. Two and run. But already here we go. Wolverine's just kind of hanging on out. More half tracks coming on in, and yeah, here comes Coos, kind of ever so slow. Push here. Oh my gosh! I guess Vitman again yeah. is freaked out. The Vobovins are desperately putting up a cloud of flak. All those half tracks. Yeah. Can we finally see one of these hurricanes go down? 
Of oh, course wow. not. Oh. Oh. And the Wolverine, for some reason, shoots across Vitman's bow. Is he gonna get the kill? I mean, Rickman is stand up. I, I think so. You've got the Cromwell joining in on the shots, and oh no, he's kind of reversing sideways. That's not that's not good. No, that is not. And Wolverine no, finally realizes who he should be shooting at, and there we go, that some smoke. <laughs> yeah, that again. Um, oh, oh. The smoke's being shot at by the Wolverine. You're a little bit too, you know, up front here of the mortar half track, buddy. Oh, he's a gutsy oh, guy, and he goes down for it. Yeah. And look at middle, the Panzer Grenadiers are just melting inside the forest. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? Well, if you leave your Germans out in the sun too long, that's what happens. <laughs> that's what happens in Africa. True. Very, yeah. very true. <laughs> On the second battle of El Main, they're like, oh, we're knackered. It wasn't supply lines, it was just the Germans were melting like ice cream. Well, actually, we realized, too, those guys were on something like four to eight ounces of water a day. Yeah, because, yeah, it's not, um, I think you need more water in the desert, Khan. It was very, very impressive. I remember a story, which is watching the, the poles slowly crush on in. Yeah. But a story of a British prisoner complaining to Rommel, basically saying, hey, you're not treating us well. And Rommel was like, hey, you get exactly as much as I do. Which is <laughs> just... <laughs> Both so awesome at the same time, kind of like, wow, yeah, he got geez. nothing. Got nothing. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Plus two, though, over here for the polls, and this this, this is not going to be... Yeah. Oh, look at Rittman. Yeah. Oh, I think Rittman, he's, he's in a crossfire here. It's a little hot under the collar, and there he goes. There we go. There we go. So he survived, like... Longer than he minutes. should have. It's like 11 minutes, so that's, that's pretty decent. 11, 12 minutes, something along those lines. And so. Kretschmar, I guess, is already dead. Yeah, he's already dead. Yep, I mean, I'm just force for you. Wait, 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 so mark this down. Vitman has outlasted another ace. This is beautiful. I'm just, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Shocking. Wow. But yeah, uh, it definitely seems like Ku's going to be taking the victory here. Yes, guys, this was early on in the tournament as well. So there was a round of 12, I want to say. And I believe this was one of the earlier games here. Yeah. Do you want to take us to times two? Yep, okay, at 35, go to times two. Hey. Boom. Boom. Two. Boom. One. Yeah. Now go. Jeez. All right. You're ahead of me, I guess. Oh, sorry. I'm in. Oh, sorry. I thought. I heard 55 seconds. Ah. But, okay. Uh, that's fine. You know what? I'll take a couple. You're living in the future. I'm living in the yeah. past for a couple of seconds. People accuse me of that all the time. Not a problem. But yeah, it's really just nothing much really going on. It's he just some Panzer fours and two five runs, but a little, a little bit too late, I have to say. So okay. So. You and I are now playing some 12th SS. What have we done differently with this deck? I don't, at least for me, I would probably say that AT should have been a little bit more fleshed out. I, yeah, he needed a bit more AT on the flanks. He mm -hmm. needed to use 37mm AA guns instead of relying on 20 mils. And he needed pioneers in the center. Good God. he needed, mm -hmm. If he had pioneers in the center, he would have had a much better time in the uh, forest fight. But as much as I love Pansy when it is, they're not suitable for every situation. But also, Ku just did a really good job of S-port. And it's not a good S-port map. Because yes. you don't have a direct line of sight, so you might as well just attack from above. And wow. if, if uh, Gamal Neal actually had some proper AA units, it would have gone much better for him, I'd say. Well, his little hunting pack over there just goes like, completely ballistic, and there oh goes the God, surrender. look at the kills. Holy God! God! It doesn't Jesus. even. It does. It doesn't feel like that. Jesus, Christ. it doesn't feel like that at all. But Jesus Christ! Ah, uh, you want to know why? Because everything that the poles lost was infantry, except for like a couple of half tracks. Yeah, and I like looking at the poles. Like, did he lose any actual tanks? One Stewart. He, he okay. He lost one Stewart. Yeah, that's insane. Mass. That's pretty good. That's pretty good tank preservation. And like I said, whoever gets the tank blob and keeps their tanks alive wins. And the Poles managed to do that. And looking at Wolverine, that got quite a lot of kills there. Look at that 17-pounder. Uh, oh, damn. He's almost a tank three ace. Pan three Panzer fours. Yeah, he paid for himself quite well. In a Firefly as well, knocking out Rittman. Although, to be, to be fair, a lot of these kills did happen when the Germans are collapsing the last yeah. six minutes. Fair point. 
but but look uh, at that from minute 29 32 yeah. down to the bottom this poles lose one unit yeah that's 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 basically that's the entire game right there even though it just doesn't feel like it no that was a uh, very passive from trophus s and too bad he couldn't really like you said just needed better defense on the flanks and proper infantry play but pose ku did a real good job here played yeah his deck perfectly which is funny because in the beginning part of that game you were saying how poorly he was playing that deck <laughs> i know but he managed to keep his stuff alive and then once he figured out yeah you know you might as well just risk it and push especially if you got strategy keys because you can just throw him away yeah he made a good amount of ground and also just built up on the air power even just pretty much hurricanes or 20 mils mm -hmm. more than enough to secure the stuns and then push up through after knocking out the pandagrams etc exactly exactly so congratulations to ku bad luck to gal o'neill um i will not ruin we will not ruin the outcome of that tournament in case we bring some more games which i think we are right Ryan? yeah sounds about good anything else to add to this one though nope i'm good sounds good folks we'll catch you all later this has been con Ulrich. i'm rang rude take it easy